I know when raising children, the easiest way to raise children is two things. Give them good food, no rubbish, <laughs> and number two, you work with the will. The will is the governing power in the nature of man. And you've probably heard the saying, a man convinced against his will will be of the same opinion still. Hello, I'm Barbara O'Neill. Today we're focusing on a topic that's essential for all of us, especially as we age, the best foods for a healthy brain. Our brain is our command center, and what we eat can significantly impact its function and longevity. Did you know that nearly 40% of adults over 65 experience some form of cognitive decline? This is why it's crucial to nourish our brains with the right foods. In this video, we'll explore the top brain boosting foods backed by research, from antioxidants to healthy fats, and how they can enhance memory, focus, and overall cognitive health. Join me as we discuss practical tips for incorporating these foods into your diet and help protect your most valuable asset, your brain. As a thank you for joining me today, we're giving away 100 free copies of my best-selling book to our subscribers. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe, like this video, and comment why you want to win. Now let's get started. This morning, we're going to the capital city of the human body, which is the brain. Notice where the capital city is. It's in the skull. And with the skeletal system, it's an internal structure causing us to stand upright. But when it comes to the head, the skeletal system now becomes an external structure. It becomes an external structure because it is now protecting the most delicate and yet the most important organ of the body. But when you have a look at the head, you will see seven avenues of access into the brain. There are two ears, there are two eyes, there are two nostrils, and there is a mouth. Everything we hear or have ever heard, everything we see or have ever seen, everything we smell, and everything that goes into our mouth, whether it be food or drink, has an effect on the brain. Our decisions determine our destiny. So how important that we know something about the decision-making part of our brain. This is an area that many people are ignorant. The little book, The Ministry of Healing, which I see is up the back in the foyer, it says in there on page 127 that the only hope of better things is the education of the people in right principles. It's a tragic thing today that in Australia, 50% of Australians have are or will suffer from some form of mental illness. And 1,700 cases of Alzheimer's is being diagnosed every day in Australia. These figures indicate that many people don't understand their brain and they don't realise that we have more control over, we, over what we do and even what we say than we think we do. So in this short little time I have with you this morning, I'd like to just open the door a little bit and show you the parts of our brain where we make our decision and what influences them. So we're going to begin by looking at the brain. Now the brain, from side on, it looks a little bit like this. And there is what's called the limbic system. And the limbic system basically takes up about that part of the brain. And this limbic system is often called the emotional brain. And I think we all know about emotions. And I think we all know that emotions aren't a very good guide because they go up and down like the wind. But there's another part of our brain that God designed to actually control that limbic system, that emotional part of the brain. So to do this, we're going to have a look at the brain from top down. From top down, you will have a look at the brain like this. And in the front part of the brain, and we're going to call this the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain, and I think the way you're looking it is. So in the right part of the brain, you could call that the I want section. That's down there. Sorry, not the I want, the I won't 
Now this is a very important part of the brain. Where it's very important is, no, I won't have that cigarette. No, I won't have that cup of coffee. No, I won't have that big state. I'll have a bowl of lentils instead. And on the left part of the brain is the I will. And the I will part of the brain is also very important because I will get out of bed and exercise this morning. I will go to bed early. I will make decisions that are helpful for my body. So you've got the I won't and you've got the I will. And we need a little bit of balance in there and that's where we come to right in the center is the I want part of the brain. What do I want? Do I want a healthy body? And if I want a healthy body, then I can trigger that I won't do that or I will do that. And God designed our brain so that this part of the brain just here in the center is where our goals are. It's called the prefrontal cortex, or sometimes it's called the frontal lobe. And this is where our will is. This is where we make our decisions, and it made a and the I will or the I want threaded through the <laughs> won't through the through the I want. That's actually what should govern our decisions. The prefrontal cortex is essential for many of the things we do every day. It helps us plan, solve problems and make decisions. This part of the brain allows us to think ahead and consider what will happen if we take a particular action. It's like having a built-in advisor that helps us choose wisely instead of just acting on impulse. One important aspect of how our brain works is the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system, which is where our emotions are processed. When we feel stressed or overwhelmed, our emotions can sometimes take the lead, leading to hasty decisions we might regret later. However, if we become aware of this, we can train ourselves to pause and engage that rational side of our brain before reacting. Creating good habits is another way to strengthen our decision-making abilities. For example, if you make a point to exercise regularly or eat healthy meals, you're not just benefiting your body, you're also reinforcing the pathways in your brain that support those healthy choices. Over time, making the right choices becomes easier because your brain gets used to it. Moreover, the environment we surround ourselves with plays a significant role in how we make decisions. Being around supportive friends and family can encourage us to stay focused on our goals. On the flip side, a negative environment or toxic relationships can pull us off track and make it harder to stick to our intentions. The first law is the law of cause and effect. Effect follows cause with unvarying degree all through nature. And never should the effect be blamed as the cause. I had a lady come to me and she said, I found the cause of all my problems. I've got chronic fatigue syndrome. I said, no, 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 that's not the cause of all your problems. That's actually the effect. <laughs> Even when someone says, I've got depression. Do you know you can't just get depression? <laughs> depression is actually an effect. It is not a cause. There's a very interesting book by an American doctor named Dr. Neil Nedley. It's called Depression, A Way Out. Every chapter starts with someone else's story showing how they conquered depression using some of the simple principles I'm showing you now and some of the simple principles I've been showing you all week. Dehydration affects depression. Late nights affect depression. <laughs> so you can see what we're doing this morning. We're pulling those eight physical laws we looked at this week and we're pulling the eight mental laws together. We should always have our detective off, hat on. Do you know, recently I consulted a... Uh, a private detective and I said to him oh you're a private detective so am I <laughs> I love the detective work of discovering why someone has a certain condition it's Newton's third law of motion to every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction Proverbs 26 verse 2 states that the curse causeless shall not come you know what that means no problem happens without a cause there is always a reason in fact, to say someone just has something is to defy basic science. 
So we should always be looking at the cause of a problem. And sometimes the problem for depression could be too much coffee, dehydration. So that's the best place to start. When someone comes to me wanting help with depression, do you know that's what I do? I said, start drinking more water. Start easing off your coffee. You could stop your coffee straight away, but you might suffer. A clear indication that it's not doing you any good. I say, start going to bed early. Start limiting your technology time. Start seriously assessing what you're watching and the effect it's having on your brain. Start exercising. But I don't feel like exercising. Yes, that's your limbic emotional brain. But what do you want? I want to feel good. I want to conquer my depression, so I will go and exercise. Can you see how that all threads into each other? The second law is the law of choice. And the law of choice, as you can see, is determined in that I want, the frontal lobe part of the brain, your guardian, where your goals are. This is what you feel like doing, but this is what you want, so that influences your decisions. And when you're well slept, well hydrated, well sunned, well exercised, well fed, that I want part of the brain is a lot stronger. But we've got something else coming here, and that's habit. You've heard of habit? <laughs> habit can be our best friends or our worst enemies. To understand habit, I'm going to draw your brain cell. Here's your brain cell. It's your nerve cell. And we have one trillion of these in our brain. They're the dendrites or the receiving stations. And this is the arm that comes out of the nerve cell. These are the little filaments on the end. They're the boutons. Here is the next nerve cell. Our nervous system is an electrical system and it does not touch, they do not touch each other. They communicate with each other via little chemical messengers in the brain. And these little chemical messengers jump from cell to cell. So the chemical messengers come in, they're encapsulated in the nucleus, and then they're sent down the arm. And they come into the boutons, and then they're released out to the next nerve cells. Now those messages can be traveling anywhere between two and 200 miles an hour. Well, in a crisis, Anyone that's been in a war zone, they know you're, you're, you're moving and you're moving very fast. Now, even though you're just sitting here, your brain cells can be moving fast because you're considering everything that you're hearing right now. And when you are hearing the things you're hearing, your, your, your brain is processing it through your I want. In fact, you're probably hearing some things and you're probably thinking to yourself, I won't have that coffee anymore. Or maybe you're hearing some things and you might start to say, yeah, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to bed earlier tonight so that I can, I will get up and I will. Can you see it all threads through that? It's an amazing brain. In fact, science still doesn't totally understand the full functioning of the brain. The brain's complexity is truly fascinating. It operates through a vast network of connections that constantly adjust based on our experiences, choices and habits. Each time we make a decision or take an action, we either strengthen or weaken certain pathways in our brain. This ability to change is known as neuroplasticity, meaning our brains can adapt throughout our lives. When someone decides to adopt healthier habits, like exercising more or improving their diet, they kick off a series of changes in their brain. For instance, regular physical activity boosts the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are crucial for mood regulation. When these levels rise, people often find their mood improves and symptoms of depression decrease. However, the journey to change isn't always easy. Our brains are wired to favor routines and comfort, which can make it tough to break old habits or establish new ones. When stress hits or we face temptations, we might revert to familiar patterns, even if they aren't good for us. This is where awareness comes in. By being mindful of when we're slipping back into old habits, we can make better choices. Additionally, surrounding ourselves with supportive people and environments can significantly influence our decisions. Engaging with friends or groups that prioritize health and positivity 
can motivate us to stay on track. Finding communities that share our goals can provide the encouragement and accountability we need. I'll give you a story. This story is about a community nurse. Community nurses go and visit people in their homes to help shower or administer medications. This community nurse is in her mid-40s. She's carrying a bit of extra weight, so the day before she decided to go on a weight loss diet, she had an apple for breakfast and a cup of coffee with skim milk and three teaspoons of sugar. Got that? Mid-morning, she's dropping another cup of coffee with three teaspoons of sugar and skim milk. Lunchtime, she grabs a quick sandwich, no fat. You know this no fat mentality, want to lose weight. Gets a bread that's no fat, has a cup of coffee with three teaspoons of sugar and skim milk. By mid-afternoon, she's dropping. Mid-afternoon, she has the other pep up with the coffee. By the end of the day, I ask you, what is her appetite like? Huge. Did you know that it's the strongest urge in the human body? You talk to anyone that was in the wars or anyone who has not eaten for a long time, they will do anything. We hear really tragic stories. There's, I don't know whether you've ever read the story of the fall of Jerusalem. Years they were besieged. And when the Roman army came in, they found that parents had eaten their children. Now, we're horrified at that. We don't know. <laughs> the that urge, that hungeth urge, I don't think many people even know it. <laughs> Not today. We're so well fed. Many people like this lady, though, on the weight loss diet, by the end of the day, it's just massive. You know the saying we've got in Australia, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. You know, th that huge hunger. She's driving home. You see, blood glucose levels are dropping. This isn't really working. And she actually sees the pizza hut. She can have that pizza in her mouth in minutes. She goes and she's so hungry she gets the biggest. And she thinks, oh, I might eat half tonight and half tomorrow. Tragic, isn't it? On the way home, in the back of her mind, there's this nagging thought that she's broken a diet. She's going to feel guilty. I'll grab a movie and get lost in a movie for a couple of hours. And oh, there's a bar of chocolate there. I'll just have a square. She goes home. Oops, the whole pizza goes. The movie's on. And do you know that when a person is lost in a movie, their frontal lobe is bypassed? And you'll find by the end of the movie, the person, oops, has eaten all the pizza. Oops, the, the whole block of chocolate's gone. But you know, the movie ends, doesn't it? And you're again whew, faced with it. She, she doesn't feel sleepy with all that caffeine from the chocolate and the stomach going berserk. I'll have a couple of um, bourbons and Cokes. That'll knock her out, she says. She sleeps. How does that lady feel when she wakes up in the morning? <sighs> what does she do to pick herself up? Does it every time. More coffee and sugar. Weight loss diet today. I'll just have a cup of coffee and half an apple for breakfast this morning. Has a shower, puts her face on put some new earrings on, it'll give her a little bit of a lift. She's in the car, it's a little bit further than she thought. Out back Australia, no country towns for a while, she starts to drop. Blood glucose starts to drop after that initial pump up. She reaches for her lollies, her candies, oh no, the packet's empty. She reaches for her Coke. Oh, no, she did the last tin yesterday. Now, normally, when she was getting low, she'd buy more. But at the end of the day, the day before, frontal lobe wasn't even working because hunger had just taken over everything. What's happening inside of her body? Understanding how this cycle affects her brain health is crucial. When blood sugar levels drop, the brain experiences stress because it relies heavily on glucose for energy. The frontal lobe, responsible for decision-making, impulse control and judgment, becomes less effective. This is why our nurse struggles to maintain her diet and ends up succumbing to unhealthy food choices. Chronic fluctuations in blood sugar can lead to a phenomenon known as brain fog, which affects cognitive function. When she consumes high sugar foods like pizza and chocolate, the immediate spike in glucose can lead to a crash later leaving her feeling sluggish and unable to think clearly. 
This can create a vicious cycle where she craves more sugar to regain that energy, further impairing her ability to make sound choices. Moreover, prolonged poor dietary habits can lead to inflammation in the brain. This inflammation has been linked to various neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. The repeated consumption of high fat, high sugar foods contributes to this inflammation, which can further diminish brain health. In addition to physical effects, the emotional toll of overeating and guilt can lead to anxiety and depression. This emotional state can hinder her motivation to make healthier choices, trapping her in a cycle of poor eating and declining mental health. To break this cycle, focusing on balanced meals with a mix of complex carbohydrates, healthy fats and proteins is essential. These foods can help stabilize blood sugar levels, providing the brain with consistent energy. This consistency can improve cognitive function, enhance mood and ultimately lead to better decision making regarding her health. By prioritizing her diet, she can reclaim her mental clarity and emotional well-being, demonstrating the profound connection between nutrition and brain health. If someone rings me up or emails me from America and says, Barbara, I'm, my cholesterol levels are 250, the doctor says, I'll, if I don't have a go on the cholesterol lowering medication, what's this based on, fear? I'm going to have a heart attack and die. I said, that's perfectly normal. 265 is perfectly normal. The Framingham Heart Studies. The, this is a little town of Framingham. The studies have been going for about 40 years, looking at 30,000 people. Some come on, some go. And they set up this study to prove that cholesterol causes heart disease, but it has not. People with low cholesterol levels are having heart attacks. But you know what it did show? People with low cholesterol levels um, are in just as much uh, a danger and even more danger of getting mental problems. Mm -hmm. People with high cholesterol levels don't suffer from dementia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the brain loves what? Fat, cholesterol. Fat, cholesterol, yeah. Mm. Oh, I like this study because it wasn't funded by the pharmaceutical companies. It wasn't funded by the dairy industry, the meat industry, the, the wheat industry. So you don't hear much about that because they don't like the results. To support brain health, it's essential to focus on a diet rich in nutrients that promote cognitive function, protect against inflammation and support overall mental well-being. Incorporating a variety of foods can help achieve these goals. Fatty fish stands out as one of the best food choices for brain health. Fish like salmon, trout and sardines are high in omega-3 fatty acids, which are crucial for brain function. Omega-3s play a significant role in building cell membranes in the brain and are linked to improved memory and mood. Studies have shown that a diet rich in omega-3s can reduce the risk of cognitive decline as we age. Including fatty fish in your diet two to three times a week can provide substantial benefits. Another great option is leafy greens, such as spinach, kale, and broccoli. These vegetables are loaded with antioxidants and vitamins, particularly vitamin K, which is known for its role in supporting brain function. Vitamin K is believed to help enhance cognitive abilities and protect against cognitive decline. Leafy greens also contain folate, which is essential for the production of neurotransmitters, the chemicals that transmit signals in the brain. Regular consumption of these greens can contribute to better brain health and improved overall cognitive performance. Berries are also an excellent choice for brain health. They are rich in antioxidants, particularly flavonoids, which help combat oxidative stress and inflammation in the brain. Research suggests that berries, such as blueberries, strawberries and blackberries, may improve communication between brain cells, leading to enhanced memory and cognitive function. A daily serving of berries, whether fresh or frozen, can be a delicious and healthy addition to your diet. Nuts, especially walnuts, 
are another beneficial food for the brain. Nuts are packed with healthy fats, antioxidants and vitamins that support brain health. Walnuts in particular are high in DHA, a type of omega-3 fatty acid that is crucial for brain health and cognitive function. Regular consumption of nuts has been associated with improved memory and overall brain function. A small handful of nuts each day can provide a healthy snack option while supporting cognitive health. Whole grains should not be overlooked either. Foods like oatmeal, brown rice and whole grain bread provide essential nutrients and help maintain stable blood sugar levels. Whole grains are rich in fiber, which promotes good digestion and can help reduce inflammation in the body, including the brain. Keeping blood sugar levels stable is important for maintaining focus and concentration throughout the day. Incorporating whole grains into meals can provide lasting energy for both body and brain. Dark chocolate can also play a role in supporting brain health. Rich in flavonoids, antioxidants and caffeine, dark chocolate can improve blood flow to the brain, enhancing cognitive function and mood. While it's best to choose chocolate with a high cocoa content, moderation is key. A small piece of dark chocolate can satisfy your sweet tooth while providing some health benefits. Finally, hydration plays a critical role in maintaining brain function. Water is essential for overall health and staying hydrated can improve concentration, alertness and mood. Dehydration can lead to cognitive decline and decrease focus, so it's important to drink enough water throughout the day. Aim for at least eight glasses of water daily and consider incorporating hydrating foods like cucumbers, watermelon and oranges into your diet. Thank you for watching. I hope you found these insights on the best foods for a healthy brain helpful and inspiring. Remember, making small changes to your diet can have a big impact on your cognitive health. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more tips on maintaining your well-being. Take care and see you next time.